I don't have to tell you how scared I was when I saw it. Like, scared shitless. I didn't believe it was real at first. I thought maybe I was dreaming. But soon after, I concluded that I was dealing with a creature that's out of this world. It isn't every day that you meet with intergalactic, demented creatures or demons from hell or whatever other evil places. I just found it on my couch one morning after I woke up. It was the oddest and scariest thing I'd ever laid eyes on. When it saw me too, it started howling, raging like crazy, probably demanding food. The game was on, and it was watching it like it was the biggest football fan in the world. Then it started dragging its ass on the carpet, circling around me. The creature didn't attack me or anything. He seemed harmless, but still goddamn horrible to look at. It burped and started running through the living room until it went headfirst into the furniture, where it instantly blacked out. I honestly thought it was going to bite or kill me when it'd wake up, and my heart was racing inside my chest, drumming so hard like Tommy Lee was playing a solo in a Motley Crue live concert. I saw a letter on the carpet, and I wondered where or who it was from. And, of course, that's when the trouble started. Let me just write it here verbatim, and then I can go on with it. It was written in red ink, the letters were pulsating different shades, and I was pretty sure it had to be supernatural or the likes of that. Luckily, I took a photo before reading it all. You'll see why it was a good idea. Dear Jonathan, Hello there. Sorry to send Fluffy out of the blue, but I really am busy at the moment, and I need you to take care of him for a few days. These are troubling times down here. I had a few guys who went overboard with drinking and gambling, and they haven't been doing their duty properly. I won't get into detail about how things work here, as you're not eligible for a place yet. You're very close, though. I don't even want to start telling you what a crazy party we had on Halloween. We had stripping demon hookers, we smoked DMT, drank whiskey that was a thousand years old, brewed right down here with our own special recipe. Good times. I left one bottle in the fridge for you as well. Just be careful with drinking too much or you'll go insane. It kind of burns your throat really bad, and if you do shots, you'll be able to breathe flames. <laughs> Not really. Joking. Duh. Like, bringing the lols, you know what I'm saying? Seriously, though, don't drink too much in a single day. If you have just a single on the rocks, you should be fine. If you actually do get drunk on it and see dancing devils, just ignore them. They're not real. Or are they? LOL. JK. Anyways, the reason I sent Fluffy over is that I have some business to attend to here on Earth, and I can't leave him alone down there. The last time I did it, he ate my sidekick after he forgot to feed him on time. I can't carry him with me either because, well, I got important stuff to do that requires my utmost attention. So I have chosen you to watch for my dear Fluffers. Ain't he great? Did he get to run headfirst into the furniture by now? He does that when he's in a new environment. Speaking of, you have to feed him every Wednesday at 12pm sharp. Not a minute earlier, not a minute later. I can't even highlight the importance of that. Even if he is a demon, he still eats the usual raw stuff. Raw hearts, raw kidneys, raw muscles, you know, everything meaty basically. Also, aside from that, he requires milk daily. Just a little. It doesn't matter when you give it to him. He will not refuse it. Just make sure it's not too much, otherwise he'll start barking and howling like crazy and your neighbors will hear him and you don't want that to happen. No bueno. He does like strawberries from time to time, but I recommend giving those only on Friday mornings and only in moderation. Like, two or three of them. Because he has a tendency of getting bloated and he'll start shitting all over your house. And you do not want that to happen because his shits are very acidic and they will punch holes in the floor. You'll have a shitty floor, get it? Anywho, I gotta bounce. I'll come over to get Fluffy later this month. Do not get physically or verbally violent with him. Toodles! Yours truly, Satan. P.S. If you're lucky and he likes you, he'll try and communicate with you. So if you ask him a yes or no question, he'll reply with one bark, I personally call them barks, for yes, two for no. Try it if you get the chance. P.S.S. If I see that you took good care of him, I'll make sure you get a big fat reward. If no, then... Right after I finished reading it, the letters scrambled all by themselves into the face of a devil, who smirked and winked at me right before vanishing. What the fuck, right? If you're like me, then you're wondering what the hell was going on. I just experienced two supernatural events in less than five minutes, and I didn't even think that there was a word in the dictionary to describe how scared I was. The tag on his collar was in the shape of a pink heart with the name Fluffy written on it. So I knew he didn't lie in the letter, but... Fluffy? 
there was a huge discrepancy between the name and the actual way the creature looked. Anyway, let me tell you a bit about Fluffy. God, I can't even say his name without my heart starting to rise up in my throat when I think about the fact that I had to monster sit the devil's pet. The small creature was approximately three feet tall. It had purple fur all over its body and two crimson tusks, one longer than the other. Its eyes were a bright hue of glowing pink, and it had three legs and four arms. The arms had little claws on them, probably so that it could grab its food better. I still couldn't believe it, but I was sure it was real. I had to do what he said in the letter, and I had to take care of it. I found myself in a situation in which I'd never thought I'd be. I decided to call it a hymn, just like Satan wrote in his letter. Maybe that helped. Fluffy was waking up, and I approached him. He was a bit scared. I could sense it, and when I tried to pet him on the head, he hissed at me. And that's when I noticed his dark orange tail that ended with an arrow tip. Classic demon stuff, right? I let out a woe, and I saw his pink eyes and the tail both lit up in flames. The light was flickering while he focused on studying me and my moves. The tail was colored a bright flamey orange that seemed to contrast the dark hue pretty well. I wondered how I should call him. Here, Fluffy. Here, little demon. At a monster. Fluffy? Want some milk? I asked. He started wagging his tail and ran towards my leg. Fortunately, the fire was gone and nothing burned. Does Satan give you milk in hell? I asked again and heard him bark, sort of. It wasn't your traditional dog bark, more like a thousand barks that echoed in one. You know, like, uh, you kind of imagine a creature of hell doing. Yeah, th that's kind of how it sounded. I took a bowl and put some milk in it, and he started drinking it with his three tongues and spikes started coming out from his back. That probably meant he liked it, I thought. I felt physically sick when I heard the sound of them erecting from under the flesh, and I started shivering with fear that I'd never thought to experience ever in my life. I made his sleeping spot in the kitchen, and I tried to make it as comfortable and cozy as possible. After all, I didn't exactly know how to take care of a demon pet, except for the instructions I was given. Of course, I had to call in sick at work that morning, because you know you don't get the chance every day to monster sit Satan's pet. Time passed on, and nothing significant happened on that Tuesday. Oh, luckily I remembered I had to get his food for the next day. There was a butcher's shop nearby, so it was a quick errand to run. I left him sleeping, and I wished that nothing bad would happen. I mean, Satan would have trained him by now, right? I bought like 20 pounds of chicken hearts, beef steaks, sirloins, and pork chops, and I put them in the freezer to make his lunch the next day. Then I heard my neighbor Gary blasting that stupid black metal shit, and screaming vocals over the original song like a goddamn lunatic. Hey, fucking asshole! Am I turning that down? I'm trying to rest! I angrily yelled. Up yours! This is real frickin' music, not that pop shit you listen to! His wife Karen replied. Hey, fuck you both, you demented scumbags! I'm gonna call the cops so you don't turn that shit down, you hear me? I said, blood starting to boil inside my veins. Five minutes later, the music stopped. Fucking Gary and Karen, what a lovely couple. I saw Fluffy standing behind me, growling. Sorry, little guy. I shouldn't have yelled. Eh, it's just they piss me off sometimes with that stupid musical vomit. I told him, but he didn't stop growling. I moved past him, but he was still standing there motionless, just growling in that direction. I assured him it's all right, and told him to come with me so I could give him some milk. He happily obliged. Night came, and I took Fluffy to bed. Even though he seemed to listen to every word I said, there was still some sort of darkness in the way he looked at me. They said that the eyes are windows to the soul, so maybe that's exactly what he was doing, trying to read my soul and see if I was fit to take care of him or not. Listen, Fluffy, your owner gave me strict rules and told me to be really careful about taking care of you, okay? So please don't start throwing tantrums in the middle of the night or become too curious about the neighborhood, okay? I told him, hoping that maybe he could understand. Still, I was trembling with fear. Then I remembered what Satan said at the end of the letter. One bark for yes, two for no. Do you understand? I asked him again, and I heard him bark once. We were starting to get along pretty good, and I went to bed for the night. Lights out. Someone knocked on the front door. I got out of bed to see who it could have been at this late hour of the night. Half asleep, I opened the door to see Gary, enraged with madness, drunk as a skunk and high as a kite, holding a knife in his hand. You disrespected my woman, you piece of shit! No one talks to her like that! He said, his hands shaking. 
Whoa, listen, man. I'm sorry, all right? I, I shouldn't have said those things, I told him, hoping to resolve the conflict peacefully. Of course, that wasn't the case. You can't reason with madmen. His right fist connected with my face, and I was sent to the floor, stars filling my vision. My upper lip split, and I felt blood entering my mouth. The salty and coppery taste was something I hadn't felt since I was in a school fight as a kid. I tried to punch back, but I couldn't match his enormous size and strength. He put the knife to my throat and asked me if I wanted to die. I shook my head as tears started to form in my eyes. He was pressing the tip of the blade against my neck, and I thought that the end would soon follow, and I'd die at the hands of this drunken crack addict. He pocketed the knife and spat in my face, telling me that if I ever even looked at them again, I'd be dead. He ended by saying that if I called the cops, he'd kill me. Even if he were to be arrested, he'd hire a guy to kill me. Or worse, just cripple me, make it look like an accident. I looked in the corner where the kitchen was and saw Fluffy standing there, just watching. I shook my head at him, not to make a move. Then I pissed myself with fear, the warm liquid staining my pajama pants. Gary punched me one more time, in the ribs, and I coughed blood on the floor. You're fucking disgusting, you stupid fuck! He said right before leaving, slamming the door on his way out. I didn't want to call the cops straight away because fear overtook all my other senses, and the guy was batshit crazy. I mean, he could have come back at any second, and I never trusted a person as erratic as him. Besides, I had to deal with more important things than my split lip and pissed pants. I raised myself, patched my lip, and went to take a shower. I was in and out of sleep for a few hours when suddenly I jolted awake as I heard the front door slamming shut. Someone was trying to rob me. I had to deal with a demon, a murderous neighbor, and now a burglar. Or maybe it was Gary who changed his mind and wanted to finish me off for good. Shit, 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 I thought. I didn't have anything to defend myself with, so I just took a pencil from my desk so I could stab the motherfucker in the eye if push came to shove. I checked the living room. Nothing. I looked around. Nothing. I went to the kitchen and turned on the lights. Fluffy was standing there with a human arm in his mouth while his tusks were dripping blood. I recognized Gary's tattoos on it before I stumbled and fell to the floor. Fluffy was different. He was bigger in size now, and there were spikes all over him, and they dripped with blood too. He started wagging his tail and dropped the arm at my feet, barking at me to take it. Then he pushed it again with his tusks toward me. Oh no, Fluffy. What the hell did you do? I yelled. Big mistake, because his eyes and tail lit up again. Sorry for yelling. Didn't mean to. It's just I'm scared, and you shouldn't have done that, I said. Then I saw Gary's head washing me from the corner of the room, his lifeless, dull eyes frozen with fear. I shrieked and fell on the floor again. Then, from across the street, I heard Karen letting out a huge scream, one that woke up the whole neighborhood. I understood why Fluffy did it. He wanted to protect me from the bad neighbor, but he left me with a bad situation on my hands, so I had to think fast. Fluffy, is the rest of the body here in my house? He barked twice. Did you leave it in their house? I said while pointing to Carrie and Karen's house. Woof. Well, at least we got that figured out. I was afraid he might have eaten parts of him and would get me in double trouble. He wasn't allowed to eat anything except on Wednesday, remember? I told him to stay put. I put some trash bags for Gary's head and arm, and then stuffed them inside the freezer with the rest of his food. Figured, I don't know, maybe he'd eat them in a few hours. I then wiped the floor clean with bleach and made sure there wasn't any more blood in the house. Fluffy went to sleep like nothing happened. What a shit show. Then I heard the police sirens, and as I watched through the window, I saw them pull up in front of my neighbor's house. I didn't even notice it was morning. I just stood on the side of my bed, petrified. All kinds of scenarios going through my head. Jail for the rest of my life. Death row. Things like that. 11.30 in the morning. Time passed so fast while I stood there like a statue. Still and unable to move. Frozen with fear. I heard a knock on the front door. Two police officers came to ask me questions. They wanted to see if I knew anything about Gary's killing. As soon as I started talking, Fluffy started barking. Hey, Fluffy, keep it down, all right? I'm trying to talk with these police officers about the tragic accident that happened last night. Do you understand? He barked once. I'm trying to save both our asses here, I thought. His uh, wife told us you got in a fight yesterday, Mr. Turner. She said you were pretty aggressive towards them. Mind telling us why? One of them asked. 
I looked at Agent Suck and Fuck, standing on my porch, and wished that Fluffy would come and rip their heads off. It wasn't aggressive, officers. It's just sometimes they take that black metal music too seriously and forget that other people are living in the neighborhood. It was very loud, and I was trying to get some sleep, I told them, whimpering. More questions followed, and when I checked the clock, it said 11.51. If that's all, officers, I said, trying to make them leave so I could feed the dog. Got somewhere to be, sport? Agent Suck asked me patronizingly. I shook my head and said that I just needed to feed my dog. He's very hungry. Come on, Gary, let the man be. We'll be in touch, Mr. Turner. Thank you for your cooperation, Agent Fox said. His name was Gary. I felt like I was in some sort of bad cosmic joke. What happened to your lip? You got your ass handed to you or something? I said that my dog accidentally scratched me while I was training him. It was no big deal. Then they both said goodbye, and I was getting really nervous and stressed because I didn't want to miss Fluffy's lunchtime. 11.54. I ran to the fridge and took the frozen meat and quickly placed them in the microwave. Hit defrost for three and a half minutes and fed Fluffy. The spikes came out again from his spine, and I asked him if he liked the food, and he barked once and kept eating. Then I heard another knock. It was Officer Gary again. This time alone. His voice was changed. I know you killed him, Jonathan. I know you have his head and arm in the fridge, he said. No, 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 fucking no, this was not happening. He pointed his gun at me. On the ground, your hands behind your back. You're under arrest, he said while I followed his instructions. I was basically fucked. I'd go to prison first, then Satan would come after me for not taking care of his pet. Then Officer Gary started laughing. <laughs> Oh, man. You should see the look on your face right now. Get the hell up, man. I was just messing with you. I told you I'd like to bring the little LOLs. Where's my Fluffy? Then the little creature came running from the kitchen and jumped up on Officer Gary. I mean, Officer Satan. I mean, ugh. Thank you for taking good care of him. My business here finished earlier than anticipated, and I am truly grateful for your absolute dedication Towards this little fella here. Mind if I take all the meats from your fridge? Including the... you know. I nodded. Jonathan, I told you that you'll get a reward for being nice to my fluffy, didn't I? I nodded and he told me that my mortgage had been paid off in its entirety. I like you. I'll be seeing you around, Johnny boy. Remember, you could, you could come work for me. Think about it, will you? He said. Come on, fluffy. Let's go. They hopped in the car and started driving off into the distance. Well, my piece of shit neighbor died. That meant no more shitty black metal music. Unless Karen decided to get solo on the vocals. Maybe I'll get Fluffy again and teach her a lesson too if I get the chance. At least I'm debt free, so I got that going for me, which is nice. Might as well pour myself a glass of Satan's whiskey now. If it wasn't for your downpour of love and appreciation towards Fluffy, then Satan wouldn't have sent me the email he did. Before that, let me thank each and every one of you for your support in the previous post. I think you were right about Fluffy. He did try to protect me from that shithead Gary, and he did a hell of a good job if you ask me. So thank you for your lovely comments. And sorry I was gone for so long. I was down there, you know. So I needed a lot of rest after that. Anyways, let's get down to it. From Satan666 at xxxxx.hell. I gotta hide the guy's email address. Sorry. Hey, Johnny. Holy shit, dude. I read your post on that Reddit thing, and um, I saw that everyone loved Fluffy. Some people even wanted to hear more about him. How cool is that? I'll give them just what they want. Awesome stuff. Actually, one of my kids posts on the internet too. He calls them memes, I think. I, I don't really know what they are, but they all laugh at them. Might do one of these accounts to tell my stories too. I sure have a lot of them. Or maybe I'll just hire you to do it. I can give you, let's say, $6.66 for 100 words, for starters. <laughs> 
boy, do I have to tell you the one when I got pissed drunk with a bunch of rock stars. Man, they almost had me, not gonna lie. I think they had th three or four livers each, because they were drinking like there was no tomorrow. Of course, I was possessing one of them, so they technically didn't know who I really was. Just a quick hint. All the board. <laughs> Maybe some other time. We have more pressing matters to attend to, Johnny lad. Fluffy seems to miss you too, so I was thinking that since Christmas is coming, I should invite you to our annual Helmuth's party. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I love giving and receiving presents, so there's that. If you get to spend some time with Fluffy, you'll definitely want to get a tattoo at my shop, because I have some of the best artists in the world. I mean, worlds, plural. There are many worlds, you know, you live on Earth, I have Hell, then he has Heaven, ew. There's another place called Frozen Limbo and many more, you'll get to know some of them during your lifetime, if you hadn't already. Well, you know, except Earth, duh, you already know that one. So I figured you might want to come here and if all goes well, you'll get a once in a lifetime special present at the end of your challenge, I mean. Your stay in hell. <laughs> I won't be seeing you until the very end, boy. Um, let me tell you, it's gonna be hard. But hey, not many people get to write about actually going to hell, party with Satan, and then live to tell the tale, am I right? So, um, there's a secret passage that I kinda opened especially for you, so you can come here. There's gonna be a car picking you up and drive you there. Don't ask questions to the driver, he doesn't like that. Anyways, you like hell raris? Heh, <laughs> instead of the little horse I modified it with my face on it and added a neat horny spoiler. Horny, get it? <laughs> <coughs> Sorry man, but my own jokes crack me up every time. I got another one. What goes in through one ear, exits through the other, but stays in your head? A pickaxe. Jesus Christ. I oh, sorry. I'm grasping for air right now. That was a good one, right? Anywho. Do you have a leather jacket and some chains for your pants? If not, go and buy some. I know I told you that you're not fit yet to get here, but I was meaning not fit for living here. Like for eternity, you know? You can come for a short visit. That's no fucking problem. Can you buy some more meat from the place you bought it last time? Fluffy loved it, you can leave it in the car, the driver will bring it. PSS. There's gonna be someone waiting for you there, Jonathan. You won't have to travel alone. Oh, and I don't like that black metal shit too. More of a heavy metal guy myself, you'll see it when you get here. It's gonna be hella fun. I'll be waiting for you, Jonathan. Yours truly, Satan. My hand started shaking as I was about to face yet another supernatural event. The first one was terrifying, alright, but this one? I thought this would be a million times scarier. So if I got it straight, I was supposed to cruise my way down to hell, through the unknown depths of the earth, and if I was lucky enough to stay alive, I would party with Satan? I was pissed and scared as hell, but deep down I knew that I had to go, and I didn't want to know the repercussions of my failure to arrive in hell. Phew, that was a lot to take in. I didn't really know why he picked me for whatever it was he was doing, but that was the situation. I had to comply or else I would have died. Surely died. I knew I had to go, no matter what. I didn't want to piss off the big guy downstairs. After all, he paid my mortgage, he kept his word. Don't get me wrong, I didn't think he was my friend. We all know Satan likes to play games. Maybe I was being subjected to a very bad cosmic joke. Hell if I knew. After I bought the meats, I went back home and that's when I saw Satan's pimped ride. Damn, it was awesome. The car was painted a bright red, it had tinted windows, the actual spoiler had horns on its extremities, and the hood was customized to show Satan's head smiling and winking. I gotta admit it was the coolest car I'd ever seen. The meats could have gotten spoiled on the way, I thought. I had a small icebox in the house, so I put them inside and then in the trunk. Thing was that I had a leather jacket and chains because I was in a band at the time. Probably the best band you never heard of. Good times. 
Oh, right. Before leaving, I remembered that Satan said he likes receiving gifts, so I, I got him a t-shirt with my band, Dreams of Black. Don't Google it. You won't find anything. I got dressed and went to the car. Name's Big T. Pleased to meet you. Buckle up, I love speeding. And shut the hell up, the large, bald man said. He looked like a bodybuilder who ate three other bodybuilders. Definitely not a guy you'd want to piss off. So I decided to keep my mouth shut. We got to the local cave attraction called the Mouth of Inferno. It was called that because it looked like a monster's mouth filled with crooked rock teeth. And we used to make fun that it was the entrance to hell. It was a place for teenagers to hang out, drink beer, smoke cigarettes, and listen to heavy metal. Guess the joke was on me, right? Before driving off, Big T told me to be careful on my way there. There's a lot of horrors lurking in the darkness and on the path to the center of the earth where hell was. My eyes widened and my heart rose in my throat as if it wanted to jump through my mouth and run to a place I could never find it again. I entered the cave and saw that it was not the same as the last time I went there. I knew with certainty that in front of me there should have been a wall, but instead I found a black door with a red knob. I opened it, and in front of me stood a descending spiral staircase with lit torches on the walls. I heard a distant howl, and I figured I should take a leak before starting my journey. I didn't want fear to overcome, and... Remember what happened with Gary, right? Top a small bladder with being scared shitless, and you have the perfect recipe for pissing your pants. The stairs seemed never-ending, but still... I kept going even if my bones were shaking with uncontrollable fear, one that I had never felt in my life. The air was damp and the bats hanging from the ceiling seemed to watch my every move, studying every little thing about me. I accidentally dropped the torch from my hands, I figured I shouldn't use my phone's flashlight, and that's when I saw the bats swarming and flying over me, making those specific high-pitched sounds that sure added to the ominous surroundings. After finally finishing descending the stairs, I suddenly felt a sense of dread taking over me as I was facing a dark, long, wide corridor. Shadows were dancing on the walls, and as sweat trickled down from my temples, I heard something charging towards me, howling, barking, enraged to get me. I closed my eyes and was prepared to embrace the end. My pitiful life was coming to its final stages. From the darkness, a creature threw a bone that landed at my feet. Still not sure what it was, still trembling with fear. I threw the bone back and didn't know what to expect. Then I heard a low growl, and the creature, growling in the darkness, began stampeding towards me. Soon I was knocked over by none other than Fluffy, who started licking my face. He was barking excitedly while saliva dripped from his mouth and onto my face. Wagging his orange-lit tail, he turned around on his back and I gave him a belly rub. Hey, Fluffy, nice to see you again. Oh boy, you scared me bad, I told the purple pet demon. I felt safer because he was with me, but of course I was still scared of him. I mean, what if he lost his shit? I remembered I even packed some milk, so I asked him if he wanted some. He barked once, and I saw the spikes coming out of his back and the flame surrounding his tail. I still was at a crossroads, because I didn't know what I had to do to get to hell. What was it like? Was it a place full of lava where the restless screams and dying dreams of the sinners who got there echoed in the halls of eternity? Was it a wasteland where every sinner had to suffer the same things they got there for? I trembled upon thinking that. I knew I had to be careful and to get there in one piece. Thus my journey started. Through that dark corridor I felt eyes watching me as the skin on my neck was raising. Fluffy was ever vigilant and I had no doubt that he was trying to protect me. Still... I was afraid of him, like I said before. The torches on the walls flickered on, and I heard a large shriek coming from behind me. Fluffy jumped on me, putting me to the ground, and then instantly jumped back in the air, ripping the creature's throat open. Heart pounding in my chest like the final gong of my life was beaten repeatedly, I laid eyes upon the horrible beast. It seemed like a hybrid between a giant and a mutated pterodactyl. Fluffy tore its wings apart and ripped its legs from its body, leaving it in a pool of black gooey liquid, which was probably its blood. He then tried to make me stand up faster, probably saying that it was just the beginning of those types of things. I dusted my jeans and jacket off, and this time I noticed I didn't piss myself with fear. And so I went on with Fluffy at my side. He seemed very focused, trying to act as my protector for this journey. I was in another section of the darkened corridor, where the walls were decorated with marble and stone statues, which were... alive... Their eyes were glowing a bright red, and I ran for cover, thinking I was to be attacked yet again. I don't know how to explain it better, but they seemed to be made of live flesh. 
Squishing sounds came from their constant neck movements that were twisting and turning while their eyes were watching me. The corridor suddenly was engulfed in a thick mist, and soon after I saw the silhouette of a small man in the distance. As he approached, I realized he was not a man, but a red imp, who had a black three-eyed goat by his side. Curiously enough, the goat started speaking and not him. Or he was speaking through the goat. I didn't know, nor did I care. He told me he can grant me three wishes. Whatever I wanted, I could have. Whatever my heart ever desired, it could all be mine. Money, properties, beautiful women, you know, the whole deal. I just had to do two things. Answer one of his riddles and give him a portion of my soul. If I refused, then I just had to put some coins in his metal cup. He said that meant he could get to feed the goat, and I, for helping him, would be blessed with good luck for my journey. I've heard of things like this. I knew what happened to people who made deals with devils like that. They died early after they rose to fame, they lived lavish lives, and so on. It wasn't the time for me yet. I was not stupid or greedy, so I refused. I had other stuff to take care of. I saw the hatred in the imp's eyes, and while the three-eyed goat let out a shriek, I thought they'd both rip me to shreds. Fluffy let out a growl to make them understand I was not to be touched. Still, I think Fluffy enjoyed seeing me scared. Maybe he was feeding on that, too. Like his dark spiritual food. The face of that imp will be forever tattooed on my mind, and his hateful eyes when I refused him will haunt my dreams. I tossed some change in his mug and kept on walking, sweat coming down my temples as my heart drummed inside my chest, and if it had a voice it would have said, Why do you always put me through this? The answer to that would have been that it was not a choice, it simply had to happen for me to keep on living. The corridor ended and a red door with a black knob appeared in front of me. I slowly opened it and I saw a long street passing through a very hot desert. I walked for a few minutes and I saw buildings lying in ruins on each side of the street. Soon a sign pointing forward said, Hell ahead. Distance, 666 miles. I began asking myself if from the dunes giant worms would emerge to eat me whole and to end my existence there and then. Shivers went down my spine upon that thought. I kept on walking, stopping from time to time to drink water and give Fluffy some milk too. I finally arrived in hell. To be honest, I kinda expected it to look different. It was just a big stadium with a large lit neon sign saying, Hell Arena. I entered it and I saw tens of thousands of creatures dancing and partying. Devils, goth emo vampires, werewolves wearing leather jackets with metal band patches sewn on them. You name it. There were even humans there, those high-profile, rich-ass executives. They had a fair going on with games and mulled wine. Christmas carols were blasting through the speakers. There was a lady who saw me, and she gifted me a pair of socks with Satan's head printed all over, and in the center the question, Have you hailed Satan today? was printed. Scary and cringy at the same time. Someone accidentally bumped into me. A devil with long black horns and flaming eyes looked at me. Watch it, asshole. We barely started the party and you're pissed drunk already? He said, sipping on a can of beer. Of course, I instantly froze with fear but kept on walking. To where, I didn't know. I felt fingers tapping my shoulder and I turned around to see a... Let's say man. A man with pale red skin full sleeves tattooed on both of his arms that were glowing a bright golden hue, and two small smoking horns. He smiled, and I saw that his lateral incisors were sharp, resembling those of a predator. His pupils dilated, and he smiled at me. You made it, Johnny boy. Hell yeah. Get it? Hell yeah. <laughs> the red guy said. Yeah, I guess I did. I was almost killed by a giant mutated pterodactyl bat along the way. Luckily, this bad boy here saved me just in time, I said, petting Fluffy on the head. He wagged his tail and started barking. He's a fucking legend, ain't he? Listen, we have a bit of a problem, my man. In two hours, my band's playing and that stupid lead guitar player of mine got high this morning and he thinks he's on an island sipping margaritas with a thousand hot devil women. He's too hammered, he can't play for shit. You're up for it, aren't you? I don't know. I, I think so. I said, an uncomfortable fear coursing through my body. He told me I'll do just fine. He handed me the concert set list. I'll post in the comments. And the dude had amazing music taste for sure. He liked heavy music. Real heavy music. 
I asked him if this was hell I was in, to which he shook his head, telling me that this is just the festive part of it. If he showed me what hell really looked like, I would have lost my mind. He then took me to the bar. We started doing tequila shots. I felt hands caressing my face. I turned around and saw two devil women giggling and motioned me to go upstairs with them, but sex was the last thing on my mind then. Especially with the devil women. Seriously. Satan started laughing and told me to calm down a bit, stop being so scared. All right, Johnny. Enough with the drinking. Let's get you a tattoo done on my shop really quick. You'll heal on the spot, but it, it will hurt like hell. Hurt like hell, get it? <laughs> he told me while I forced a smile. I was in a constant mood of shitting my pants. I mean, I pissed them before, shat them I had never, so it would have been a first. I went to the Flaming Horns Gallery, where I saw a man with scales on his face and his tongue split in two. Hey, Tommy, can you hook my man up with a cool sleeve? Make it really metal, you know? Put it on my tab. It's my gift to him. Satan asked the tattoo artist. Say no more, fam. I gotcha. He replied. Yikes. His way of talking was a bit cliche, don't you think? Tommy took out a scalpel from the drawer and started carving my skin. The pain was unbearable, and my screams probably were heard even back on Earth. I felt like I was about to lose consciousness. Satan was laughing so hard, and Fluffy was just wagging his tail, barking and playing with a tennis ball. Tommy told me it was almost over, and then he spread a golden paint all over it, and the pain stopped. Five minutes after that, I had a full sleeve with flames, skulls, guitars, microphones, and all sorts of metal music references. The pain stopped, and the red ink, which was my blood, had dried off. It started glowing golden exactly like Satan's. Ain't you gonna say thanks, Johnny lad? He said, smirking. I thanked him for the gift, and then he said that the show was about to start, so we had to meet with the other band members. While nearing the stage, I heard a voice on the speakers. The show will start in 15 minutes. The legendary band playing today is none other than the Hellfire Bastards, ladies and gents. You don't want to miss this one. The show is sold out and the attendance is 66,666. Have fun, everyone. So, I was playing with the Hellfire Bastards. Cool band name. We got backstage and Satan introduced me to the other members. Satan was on vocals. A guy with a flaming skull was on rhythm guitar. A gorgeous devil woman was playing bass. While an old guy with long gray hair and four arms was supposed to blast the drums. Each of us had nicknames attached. Hellfire Bastards were Vocal, Satan, Fallen Angel, Fucking Son. Lead Guitar, Johnny, the Hero, Crimson, that's me. Rhythm Guitar, Billy, Flames, Davis. Bass, Lilith, Diva, Satanica, Fuentes. Drums, Rocky, Mad Blaster, Smith. We took the stage after the intro ended. Started blasting the songs. My guitar was practically playing by itself. Lightning coming out of it filling me with an unimaginable power. Satan was a powerhouse on vocals, sounding almost identical to the original singers. Mad Blaster was killing those blast beats, while Diva Satanica had a mesmerizing stage presence. Flames was headbanging like crazy during every song. The cheering of the crowd, the roar, the applause fueled my body and mind. Mosh pits were happening almost on every song, and plastic glasses of beer were flying off randomly in the crowd. Humans, devils, werewolves, vampires, and all their hellish creatures were partying like crazy getting drunk and having fun together. Talk about harmony, right? At one point I saw Gary's head used as a stage prop. He was mumbling black metal as shit while Satan poured gasoline on him and set him on fire. How ironic. End of the concert, fireworks started and Satan took on the mic. Thank you so much, you have been fantastic. Give it up for the whole band, especially for our guest today, Johnny, the hero, Crimson. He said while the crowd was ecstatic. That was an absolute banger, I have to tell you that. Yes, it was absolutely terrifying seeing all those creatures and being in that arena, even playing that show. But I felt an intense energy while playing live, and that was what kept us going. If you've ever played in a band, you know that feeling. After the concert, we had some burgers and steaks and drank beer. Satan told me the arena would close and everyone would go back to their regular lives. He told me that there were some rich guys from Earth who attend the show every year. Some of them didn't have many years left on their contract with him, and they would join him in hell soon permanently. They were probably the ones I saw earlier when I got there. Johnny boy, it was a blast. You need to loosen up. These things will toughen you up. Stop being so scared all the time. Jesus Christ, I mean... Ugh. Never mind, he said, laughing. He then told me that I need to take Fluffy with me. He liked it the first time. Satan told me that we should do something fun. Maybe go to an amusement park he had on Earth. 
Before leaving, I handed him his present, my band's t-shirt, to which he thanked me and said that he has faith in us to be big someday. He then showed me another entrance in hell. I took the stairs and got back to the cave in approximately two minutes. Yeah, thanks, Satan. Big T was waiting for me there. I got Fluffy in the car and went back home. I had to think about how I could take Fluffy to the amusement park. This adventure seemed to never end. Scared was too light of a word to use on how I was feeling. Anyway, I'll tell you the story next time. This is getting long already. And I just poured myself a glass of Satan whiskey and relaxed. It was the best damn whiskey I ever had. Today's video was supported by patrons like Mark from Earth, Crimson Muse, Joy Burton, Diane Showers, Mark Sewall, Cheryl James, Picker Sticker, Teddy Dog, Clue 404, Mama Cotto, Dante Kincaid, Zaren Ray, Angela Donovan, Larry Ann 50, Devin Kyle, Timothy Baird, Ajeti, Burt Turner, Vajani Espinal, Michael Pierce, Big Joe, Kerry Harkonnen, LaDonna Spivey, Scott Tanaka, Tom Stewart, Sherman Davis, Bryce Shelton, Susan McClendon, Elise Batisse, Lisa and the Cult Jam, Open Circuit, Fabulavore, Raymond Jaggers, and That Darn Fox. If you'd like to help support the channel, please consider joining my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Jordan Group Horror. As a patron, you'll get access to bonus videos and content, you'll be credited at the end of every video going forward, and if you decide to stay for three months, I'll name a character after you which will be featured in the next Hollow's End story. Links to join the Patreon are in the description. Thanks everyone for listening. I hope you please like, subscribe, and comment to help the channel continue to grow. It really does help out a lot. And see you again next time at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope you have a great night.